I'm here to eat the most extraordinary steak on earth. I'm here at Muram in Long Island City. The chef is Joshua Smoogler. He is a fine dining chef who has worked in like Per Se and Boule and some of the most amazing kitchens. Now, most American steaks are dry aged for 28 days. What's going on here is sort of next level steak. It's A5 grade 12 Wagyu. It's now at 400 days. It's steak that would have been thousands of dollars if it wasn't dry aged. I can't imagine what it's gonna taste like, so we're about to find out. <laughs> That's pretty awesome, nice. man. <laughs> <laughs> well, last time I was here, that was a giant, very sort of pink and fresh looking piece of yep. meat. Now it's just constricted and it's like gnarled and it's yeah. just, you know, but, but you can just tell that there was like an intense concentration of flavor going on. The beef itself has shrunk by what? I mean, oh, 50%, it, 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 60%? I lost about 30% weight. Uh, I wanted to experiment, so I put in two types of beef in here. This is a New York strip. This also has been here since uh, March 11th, this one actually, so it's even older. And then this one, which is the ribeye, has been here since March 22nd. It doesn't feel as heavy as you would think. And you can see it's like very solid. It doesn't even move. <laughs> Basically what you're doing with dry aging is you are trying to tenderize the meat mm -hmm. and also develop flavor in it. Exactly. The difference between wet aging and dry aging is uh, wet aging you don't lose as much moisture content. Uh, it doesn't concentrate the flavors. Uh, dry aging does a, it makes the meat that funky quality. It's all experimentation right. to see what, what we can do and how much we can push it. All right, well let's see how far you pushed it. Okay, great. This is the slice we're gonna make. Uh, it's about an inch and a half thick. That's gonna be like a thousand dollar steak, right? Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't really know. I don't even know what I could charge. Yeah. Let's try it raw. You really wanna try one yeah. piece raw? Yeah. Are you serious? You can see how marble this is. Like you can literally pull it apart and look at, look at the seams just like. Yeah. Wow, it's like cheese. It's like charcuterie. It's a very, very unusual but thing. But it's very different to American beef. But right. when it gets that age, it becomes like an amaretto or something in terms of like that intensity. There was a strong like apricot flavor. Mm. I'm ready to try this cook. While the, while the proper steak sous vide, I looked at that spinalis dorsi, which is my favorite part of the steak, and I was just like, throw that in a pan, and let's just sear it off and see what, what happens. My theory is this is gonna be almost as good as that, except it's better because I'm getting to eat it now. Oh my God, that's unbelievably good. That's pretty spectacular. The flavor is so, well, the fat, you could just, it coats your entire palate, right? Yeah. Your whole mouth is coated with that sort of furry, funky flavor. So, um, of course, Josh sous vide it, and we're just gonna sear it off and try it, and I'm sure it's gonna be amazing. The smell of blue cheese off this thing, I mean, the initial impression is almost like you're eating butter that has been flavored with garlic and thyme, right. and has that sort of those dark roasted meat flavors, mm -hmm. right. right? And then there is that sort of warmth of like, at the right. end, it's like really intense on the tongue. So incredibly juicy too. When it's in your mouth, it just like oozes out. Okay, so let's try this on rice. All right, here is probably the world's most expensive piece of Nagruri. <laughs> okay, this is great. This is sushi grade rice with some wasabi. Is it good that way? Oh my God, it's amazing. The principal textual compound is the rice. Right. Because this just dissipates instantly. Right. And, so then, and then you're getting all this umami. You're definitely getting rid of a lot of that funk. It's because of the sushi vinegar. Okay, that's, you see, that's the thing. Can I have another bite, please? You're onto something there. At some point, somebody had to combine the finest Wagyu and the finest aging process. I just want to see what happens. Uh, it's, it's, again, it's an experiment, why not? Uh, see how far we can go with it and hold, who knows. All right, so we'll see you in another 100 days. All right. And you can catch me on The Meat Show. Click here to subscribe. That's good enough, right? <laughs> This really is a soup to nuts burger. I mean, you have controlled every aspect of what ends up on the plate, right? Totally every aspect. <laughs> <laughs>